What's up, y'all? Overnight Oats Thoughts. It's New Year's Day. What's up? Um, Just got hit with a little bit of surge of 12, 19 a.m. anxiety and um, feeling it coursing through my body right now. And that's all right, but it's feeling a little less uh, annoying and freak outable as it was even 10 minutes ago. And partially because I also accompanied it about five minutes later is just coursing of thoughts and ideas and like so much that feels overwhelming um but also I just was struck with like oh this is something I've been trying to explain and bring into words and bring into thought and it finally kind of hit me and sometimes it's kind of intense when that happens but um this is all to say that uh, oh, what precipitated it is I added a few more things to my um, little altar of Riley that I got on my wall by my bathroom um, with my uh, uh, collage there. And if you're watching this, you don't know who Riley is, uh, check out my Instagram and check out my pinned uh, post there. But anyway, um, I was putting a few more things up and... It felt good to do, and it was, like, nice to kind of... I've been in this kind of productive organizing zone tonight, um, which is good, because I've... The the last couple months of 2023, I was just, like, chugging along. And I feel like, am I still chugging? I don't know. I don't know how much I feel the placebo of the new year or how much, like, the actual tangible things, like having my PTO replenished and just not being in the year that Riley died um, are affecting me right now. But I'm also, like, feeling super anxious right now. So not everything's hunky-dory, but it's all right. I've been uh, getting some stuff done. I'm feeling kind of inspired and um, definitely been feeling a certain weight off the shoulders. Even the fact that I'm recording this right now, I think, kind of shows that because I've been feeling really... Ooh, terse and like unknown and uncertain and not, and I've been feeling like annoying and like I haven't been making sense. And oh, here's a quick little shame dump. One thing that I'm kind of a, a feeling that I'm kind of ashamed of having, but is also I think makes sense, is that there there were a couple times when um, Riley was still alive and I was kind of like. Noticing that they their like uh, grasp of reality was, it felt like not at the same place that it had been, and like also just being there for them, but being worried about them. And unfortunately, the thing that I feel shameful about is the feeling. I think it was being scared of someone else having the feeling that I was having towards Riley, towards me. Of like, oh, I do not understand you right now. Like, you're trying to explain something, but it just does not make sense to me. And I think that's probably something that I really probably worry about and get anxious about. Um, I think in doing some reflection just about myself when I wanted a few years ago, I really just outlined like one of my main things in life is just to understand and be understood by other people. And it's something that takes work from both ends, but it's like a really important thing. And so I feel ashamed because like sometimes recording slob cores and talking about the more intimate, the more complex stuff like this can feel really scary. And it's something I've been practicing at and I like I'm doing it right now. And I know it also is okay. Um, But sometimes it's intense and especially in this time of grief. It's been feeling more scary. And the thing that I'm ashamed about is that I used to kind of think like one of my worries in doing slobcore was like, do I just sound like manic or like, does this sound kind of like psycho- psychosis or um, and does this like a delusion of grandeur? grandeur? I mean, <laughs> every all my art and all my videos and stuff is centered on me because um that's my perspective but so it sucks now remembering that i had those feelings and in a way like it was i don't want to be like riley 
and it makes sense I felt that way. Um, but it just like right now feels deeply shameful that I felt that. And then it makes me think like, oh, I was just like avoiding them because I didn't want to be like them. Um, and then like looking back, wondering if just I let my fear rule me too much. And there were ways I could have helped Riley, but I let my fear rule me too much. But then I do remember and like giving myself just a little bit of the um, patience and the respect, I guess, and just the general um, like good faith that like Riley would give me and that everyone that loves me would give me and trying to do that for myself. I do remember so many times where I conquered my fear in ways to help Riley and that I was able to um, step up for them and really push certain uh, comfort zones and ways and also just be there and support them. And like, uh, I feel, yeah, because I know I don't actually feel guilty about really much and I don't have many regrets. Like there's conversations that I wish we could have had. Um, but I also remember lots of conversations we were able to have in ways that I was able to kind of give them a safe place to open up in ways that they were struggling to open up, um, with others. And I think it's a really beautiful thing, but it's just the thing that sucks about them being dead is there is a perspective that I can get when I'm feeling really bad of just like, Oh, and this, like this little thing led to their death. Um, which is so silly. Like I'm not going to do it, but if I could catalog all the things that my mind has blamed on Riley's death, like it's ridiculous. Um, and I think part of the reason I do this, and this is the big phrase that got me inspired to make this. I was thinking about, I think it's the known unknowns of everything and of Riley's death and of Riley's life and of Riley's struggles. Um, it's those known unknowns that are the most just so annoying. And it, um, and so what I mean by that is just, I can speculate on like where Riley's like, like I not that I can speculate. Like they literally told me how they were feeling and the things they were experiencing. And that's the annoying thing is like I know the big thing that they were really haunted by like persistent paranoia and like expansiveness and all the things I've talked about before. And it makes sense why that would be a distressing thing that leads to someone self medicating with drugs. Um and I also know like other risk factors and reasons that they were using drugs, but I think just the known unknowns of the fact that I'm never going to be able to know like the full picture. And also the fact that maybe like my perspective is going to change and like, which ways is it going to change? And that's kind of scary. Um, but yeah, so I think what I'm really trying to do right now and as I go on forward is like to stop myself from doing, from spinning out on those little things. Um, because they wouldn't want me to do that. And it's not something I want to do. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of annoying to me. Like I've been very, I've been very annoyed with myself lately. And I think that's probably a relatable emotion. And I'm just experiencing the full envelope of this grief. But yeah, I've been feeling, I've been feeling a lot better. And it's just a process like, Right when they died, I kind of knew what I needed to do with this and, like, what's going to be good and what's, like, what I kind of want to make from this. Um, but there's just, like, the hard feelings and the sadness and missing them so much and all the what-ifs and shoulda, woulda, couldas and, um, yeah, just the hellishness of losing them. This was a 10 minute I didn't mean it, but... um acknowledge those known unknowns and the things that hurt your heart and also know that like we're never going to figure out everything in this world and there always are going to be known unknowns and we just got to learn how to be okay with that and to keep appreciating everything that we got bye